Hello everyone, Dark of All Trades here. For this video, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm still going to respond to a video, if you can call it that, but since it's a bit shorter, we're going to take a deeper dive into a single question rather than jump all around. Today's video comes from a channel called A Christian's Take. I don't know anything about this channel, but it seems to be comprised mostly of shorts. This is good for a few reasons. Mostly, it means less work in general for the creator and anyone responding. This short is called A Christian's Question That Atheists Refuse to Answer. The video is not much to look at, but I'll still show you what I can so you'll know that I'm not editing out any context or something like that. Well, act. Can I call you act? I'm not sure that atheists refuse to answer any question specifically. Atheists are not a monolith. Atheists consist of a diverse group of people from all over the world with different thoughts on pretty much everything. If you put two atheists in a room, they will disagree on any number of things. This title may be a bit clickbaity, but it worked on me. So let's answer the one question that several atheists have already answered in his comment section. Now you seem to ask a lot of questions, but I have one for you that atheists cannot agree on. Wait a second. Is it that we can't agree on or refuse to answer it? They are very different claims. Unless the question is, does a God exist? Atheists can and will disagree on the answer to your question, though I currently don't have any idea of what a question would be that atheists could disagree on that would lead to a, therefore a God exists. Christians can't agree on whether evolution happened or not. Christians can't agree on what their own God thinks about the LGBTQIA+. Whether a group of people agrees on the answer is not relevant to whether there is an answer or whether a group refuses to answer. So what is your question? Did the Big Bang happen from nothing, yes or no? Ignoring the missing question mark at the end of the question here, is this the question you think atheists refuse to answer? This isn't a question at all about atheism or that atheists would have any kind of specialty. This is a question for cosmologists, astrophysicists, and astronomers. They would be able to answer your question more robustly. Are many of these scientists atheists as well? Yeah, but ACT, why do you think that is? They study these things almost exclusively, focusing in on the harder questions so lay people don't need to. However, despite what some people may think, I take pride in answering questions directly. So here is a direct answer to the question. No, the Big Bang did not happen from nothing. That is the short answer. What it happened from in most, if not all, scientific models for the Big Bang was the initial singularity. This is a point of incredibly high density and temperature. Of course, your question is a bit unnuanced. What exactly do you mean by nothing? This term is used a lot in apologetics, but rarely does it get defined. Even without the Big Bang models we currently have, we can say that the instantiation of the local presentation of the universe did not happen from nothing, because even if we did have a clear definition of nothing, we have no reason to think that nothing could ever be the state of things. We can't examine nothing in this sense. So, on multiple fronts, the answer to your question again is, no, the Big Bang did not happen from nothing. If you answer yes, then you have a scientific impossibility, and then if you answer no, you have stated that something was always there. I sure haven't. Perhaps something was always there from the instantiation of the universe. But that isn't what you are saying here. You're referring to an eternal thing. Not only do we not know what was prior to the singularity, but we also can't even investigate it, and the laws of science break down. According to space journalist, which sounds like a cool job, Matt Williams, quote, In scientific terms, a gravitational singularity, or space-time singularity, is a location where the qualities that are used to measure the gravitational field become infinite in a way that does not depend on the coordinate system. In other words, it is a point at which all physical laws are indistinguishable from one another, where space and time are no longer interrelated realities, but merge indistinguishably and cease to have any independent meaning." End quote. A link for this article is in the description. The point of that is to say that we have no expectation that the way time operates now is anything like what was happening at the initial singularity. On top of that, even if the laws of science could have applied to the initial singularity, what you have been asking about is what happened before there was time. This question is nonsensical. There is no before, because before is time relative. At the singularity, time didn't exist for us to investigate. The Big Bang is the beginning of our local instantiation of time. Even further still, 
since we know there was something that the Big Bang happened from, and bending over backward in order to hand over the points on a silver platter that the laws of science did not actually break down, and that time existed at least similarly to how we perceive it now, this is still incorrect, in that it says absolutely nothing about how the initial singularity came to be. Yes, I realize this is actually nonsense under the known models of the singularity in time, but I'm giving as much as I can for the sake of argument. Maybe your idea of nothing was the state before the initial singularity. If the multiverse hypothesis is correct, then there was something before the Big Bang that made this universe. However, in no way by stating that the Big Bang happened from something, says that something was always there in the way you mean it here. And if something could always be there, you have no reason to disagree that there is a god. Are you trying out to be one of those ten lords of leaping I've heard so much about? Because that was quite the jump in logic. Of course, this depends on what you mean by God in this case. However, since you are admittedly a Christian, I have to assume you mean some sort of conscious agent, as all models I am aware of in the Christian God have him as a conscious agent. In this case, I have many reasons to disagree. First, even granting that something could always be there, which I have explained is not necessarily the case, how did you determine that it was an agent? How did you determine that whatever it was was conscious? How did you rule out a non-conscious, non-intelligent, non-intentional source? Even if I were to grant that a conscious agent made the universe, which I very don't, you said I have no reason to disagree that there is a God. How did you determine that the being that created the universe still exists today? These are the things that have not been shown to be true. Because of that, I can say something could always be there, and disagree that there is a God. In fact, scientifically, there had to have been something. Because in the first law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of conservation of energy, it states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be changed from one form to another. Okay, let's look up the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, it looks like it is energy cannot be created or destroyed. The total amount of energy in the universe is fixed. What you have here is correct as a simplified version. Of course, what you are missing here is what so many apologists seem to miss. Tell me, Act, in what specific circumstance does the law apply? That is, in what kind of system? The answer is a closed system. Okay, so for now, I'll grant that the universe is a closed system. Some people disagree, but that isn't important for the conversation. In thermodynamics, a closed system is a system that cannot exchange matter with the environment. It can, however, exchange energy. A common example is boiling water on a stove with a closed lid. The heat can exchange, but the matter cannot. So, using your own argument so far, your god could not have created the universe because matter cannot be created nor destroyed, right? Or are you going to say that your god can ignore the first law of thermodynamics? Or are you stating that the first law doesn't apply at the Big Bang? Either way, for matter to be created, we must assume that the first law of thermodynamics doesn't apply because either the universe was not a closed system at one point or your explanation, magic. Please amuse me and answer my question. And that's the end of his video. Super short, easy to digest points that lead to this long of a response. So to sum up all of this, the question is basically, there must be a god because the universe can't come from nothing. That's not really a question, but that's okay. This is a tired old argument, and I, like many other people, have addressed many times. Act, if this is really an area that interests you, you should take some college courses on astrophysics, cosmology, or astronomy. Even talking to professors or researchers that study these fields will get you a much better result than just asking random atheists. I am assuming you're asking this question in good faith <laughs> and genuinely want an answer. But let's say that not a single atheist has an answer. We don't actually know any of this. You are not a single step closer to showing that it is your God. I granted way more in your favor than most people would and anyone should. And still what you have left with is there was something that existed before the Big Bang. And that is it. You haven't given any properties of what the thing was or even that the thing still exists today. Even by granting a god actually made the universe, how did you determine that that god didn't just use all of its energy, force, essence, whatever you'd like to call it, in doing so, causing it to cease to exist after creating it? So what about you, viewers? Do you agree with me here, or do you have a different answer to his question than I did? 
Or are you an atheist who refuses to answer this question? Let me know in the comments below, unless you're an atheist who refuses to respond in comments, in which case, spawn in the comics to create a paradox that not even Axe God could escape. As for the like button, the god that is YouTube created that button just for you, so click it and receive its majesty. If the like button exists, you have no reason to disagree that the subscribe button also exists and should be clicked. To support my channel in a more monetary way, you can subscribe to my Patreon starting at just $1 per month at patreon.com backslash darkofalltrades, where the first law of thermodynamics definitely still applies. And as always, keep learning.